It all started at a cotton plantation owned by a man named Captain John Lyons, a rich merchant who owned hundreds of slave workers. One of which is Peter. One day, Peter had to be parted from his family because he was sold in a slave trade to the government to help construct the railroad tracks sadness and fear enveloped Peter's family while the officers came to drag Peter away from his beloved ones, making his children and wife hysterical. While feeling devastated, no matter how hard life was, Peter did not want to kill the hope he had planted as a form of strength within himself. He was brought inside a cage through Death Valley. While shackled in chains, the prisoners soon to be slaves were told to keep walking while bowing their heads to the slave market. The officers treated the slaves like dogs who had to obey their master, but Peter did not show the slightest fear. He waited for the moment to regain his pride. His attitude provoked the slave traders to always pay attention to Peter's movements. Shortly after, a figure named Fassel appeared. He was the cruelest slaver who always managed to hunt down the escaped slaves. One of the slaves named John was the proof of Fassel's cruelty. Peter witnessed with his very own eyes how cruel Fassel was with the slaves. With his body covered in wounds, John was put in the middle of the other slaves as an example for everyone. Peter encouraged everyone to remain confident in God and not let them be overcome by fear. Peter's words made John angry because he did not believe in God's power, considering the suffering and torment he had gone through his entire life. One day, the President of America, Abraham Lincoln planned to abolish the act of slavery. Upon hearing that, Peter felt the spirit to fight for his right ignited. He was not afraid of his master anymore, making him involved with Fassel. Fassel made Peter's life more miserable by tormenting him and making him as if he was his pet dog, showing no respect or rights for him. That treatment triggered Peter to plan an escape to Baton Rouge where Lincoln's troops gathered to free the slaves in that area. One day, while working, a slave fell unconscious. One of the officers told Peter to bring the fainted slaves to throw him to a hole meant as a mass grave for the slaves. Turned out, the officer intended to kill Peter. With his life in danger, Peter fought back and ensued rioting which prompted everyone to flee. Peter, followed by John and two other slaves named Gordon and Tomas fled into the forest only to find themselves trapped in a crocodile-infested swamp. Thomas didn't dare to cross the swamp, causing Fassel to catch him. After telling Peter's destination, which was Baton Rouge, Fassel let Tomas away to cross the swamp, but unlucky for him, he had to die eaten by the crocodiles. Meanwhile, Peter, John, and Gordon went into an argument and decided to part. John took the horse trail, Gordon took the swamp trail, and Peter went deeper into the forest. Their decision to part helped them to outweat Fassel and his men. Peter realized that the blood coming from his wound would ease the dogs to find him so he decided to sneak into someone's yard and stole a piece of cloth to cover his wound. Unfortunately, the owner caught him in action and rang a bell to signal Peter's location. He ran back to the forest while covering the cloth he got with his blood. He then put the blood-covered cloth into a dead tree trunk to outweat Fassel and his dogs. He then hid by drowning his body in the swamp. Soon after Fassel left, a crocodile ambushed him and pulled him into the water. Thankfully, he was able to fight the crocodile with a knife he had. After he felt safe, he took care of the leeches that covered his body. Without realizing it, much of his blood was dripping from the wounds. The next day, Fassel hunted a crocodile from the place where he found the blood-covered cloth. He cut open the crocodile's belly but he couldn't find any remnant of Peter inside. He finally realized that Peter had tricked him. One night, there was a moment when Fassel talked about his childhood, which was raised by a black nanny. The nanny was nice and he even befriended the nanny's kid but his father told him not to get too attached to them because black people would always try to dominate everything once given the chance. His dad's words made him have the heart to kill his friend and grew up as a slave hunter. To avoid being tracked by Fassel, Peter covered his body with mud. Day and night he traced the paths that horses could not pass until he found a small hut. There, he could treat his wounds and take some rest to regain his energy. Not only that, but he also tried to get some honey by climbing a tree while burning something so he wouldn't get stung by the bees. Unfortunately, he unconsciously signaled Fassel about his whereabouts by generating the smoke, leading Fassel to his place. Meanwhile, in a small settlement, a man told Peter's wife, Dodie Ann, that she had been sold to a person named Mr. Fabian and had to be taken away from his children. She knew she couldn't do anything to stop them from taking her away and had to obey the guards. Back to Peter, he got a small lifeboat and started wading through the swamps. 
He got away from that place so that Fassel could not find him, but instead, the trail that Peter left made it easier for Fassel to follow where he was going. Inside the forest, Peter met with John again who was suddenly angry because Peter had led Fassel to his hideout. In the middle of the argument, Peter told John to cover his body with onions so that the dogs would not be able to trace them but John thought that Peter had lost his mind and instead, left him. When both of them heard the dogs bark, Peter decided not to follow John and hide inside a tree root. Unfortunately, John who was hiding in the tree was found by the dogs. He was shot and fell. Behind his hideout, Peter witnessed how Fassel decapitated John's head. Back to Dodian, she was desperate to find a way not to get separated from her children. She dared herself to put her hand into a grinding machine and ordered her daughter, Betsy, to turn it on. He ended up hurting herself. The guards couldn't help but gave her some time to heal before taking her away. Meanwhile, Peter found a burning house in the middle of the forest. He suspected that there had been a massacre done to a group of members who supported the plan to abolish slavery. Peter entered the house and after looking around there, he found a dying girl lying in a room. Peter took her out and tried to treat her, but suddenly, Fassel's men came from behind. Peter tried to save her from Fassel but she ended up dead. He looked at her lifeless body and felt pity. Suddenly, he got a chance to fight Fassel's men. They were caught off guard and Peter managed to take them both down. Knowing that Fassel was coming for him, he took one of Fassel's men's guns and left from there. In the middle of the chase, Peter managed to shoot Fassel's dogs. Long story short, Peter arrived at a battlefield. He took his time to regain his energy and lay down between the corpses of soldiers. He then ran toward Lincoln's troops who were fighting the war. Unfortunately, he was immediately intercepted by Fassel. Before finishing off Peter, Fassel took his chance to make Peter beg for his life to him, but thanks to his action, one of Lincoln's soldiers showed up right before Fassel pulled the trigger. The soldier shot him dead from behind. Captain Andre welcomed Peter's arrival on the battlefield and immediately took him for treatment in the camp. After recovering, Peter was asked by an officer for his personal information. At first, Peter asked to be taken back home to meet his family, but the officer instead offered Peter to join the war to free his people from slavery. He accepted the order to fight for his people. Coincidentally, he again with Gordon who also managed to survive the chase. One of the conditions to become a member of the army was to get his picture taken, so he went to a room to do so. The photographer was shocked by the wounds on Peter's back. After that, he was brought to the captain. After seeing Peter's photo, the captain judged that Peter was a dissident and would not fit to join the army. Hearing that, Peter was angry and emphasized that every scratch on his body was a form of resistance. The torture directed toward Peter would become his source of strength to fight back. They sell me, I fight them. They throw me down a well, and I fight them again. Never break me. The moment of his life finally came. Peter didn't have to run anymore. He got a great opportunity to fight the oppression that had shackled his life so far. When Peter first entered the battlefield, he was immediately greeted by bombs. In the middle of the battle, Peter was thrown away by an explosion until he fell to his knees and lost consciousness. A few moments later, he woke up and saw the troops advancing to attack the enemy. From a distance, Peter aimed at the cannon shooters so as not to cause any more casualties. He tried to read the situation and took action by attacking the enemy to destroy their cannons. The war had ended and they won the fight. Several villages were freed from slavery, including the cotton factory where Peter's family lived. In the middle of the crowd, Peter looked for his children and wife. He finally met them and hugged them. Peter had kept his promise and got the most precious moment that he paid with suffering and tears. <laughs>